Hi, I'm Jared Hillam. Imagine you set up a lemonade stand and I came to buy the lemonade. Let's say we talked for a little while, I had a small sample, loitered around for a bit, then decided to put down some money to buy a cup of lemonade, but I realized that it wasn't enough money, so I took my money, ran home to get some more. Now, take a snapshot of what just happened. Would you say that a transaction occurred? Well, a transaction almost occurred, but you couldn't say that you closed a transaction. So what has to occur to determine whether a transaction actually happened? That is what asset compliance defines. Now you might look at this simple example and think, well, this should be easy. Why would you even need to nitpick transactions this way? But imagine if your lemonade stand had to serve 100,000 people trying to buy at the same time. Now, of course, you aren't going to be able to do that manually, but you could still do it if you could automate their purchase. So we need to take what you understand intuitively and split hairs to make sure we know all 100,000 transactions occurred and you aren't giving lemonade out for free. And that splitting of hairs is what ACID compliance defines. Now, even though ACID compliance was used back in the 1970s and was formalized in the 80s, it was something very few people discussed leading up to the early 2000s. I mean, you might have super geeky database developers getting excited about it, or it might show up in computer science textbooks, but that all changed in the early 2000s. See, Google couldn't write a large enough check to Oracle to house all the data they were processing. So they were put into a position of rethinking how data storage worked for them. What the team saw was that this need to be highly compliant to a perfect transaction really wasn't something that was important to Google. I mean, is it the end of the world if Google doesn't produce exactly the same results every time? Not really. So all of a sudden, from 2003 to now, this term has really been seeing the light of day. So in the next four videos, I'm going to piece apart the aspects of atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, and just understand that this is a bit in the weeds, but I will try to make it as easy as possible to comprehend. And you'll see a link in the video description for the next video if enough time has gone by.